Alan and I sat together last night uh, when we watched it, and the truth is, is that that's the first time I've seen it in its full incarnation. Um, and wow. Alan and I cried five times. We held our I hand, cried a little bit. Held hands throughout. <laughs> and Do you I, sing along? Uh, well, I had my daughter there who did. Yes. Guy's oh, daughter will. was adorable. I was sitting a little bit down from them, and she was dressed up as Jasmine. And you know kids, they can't lie. She was yeah. up on her feet the whole time, dancing, <laughs> screaming. Yeah. It was it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. I got a video of it, by the way, and uh, I have to have you approve it before I post it or something. Uh, that's very funny because everyone's been sending me videos. <laughs> well, I have one. People. And we got a genuine applause about, what, five times? It was wow. amazing. It was, it was a wonderful reaction. Now, the, the great thing about ma making a family movie, which I'm not familiar with, <laughs> is, the, is, is, the, is the warmth that radiates from... Mm. Um, such a, a positive and generous yeah. spirited film um, and it, you know uh, Mina and I had a bit of a cuddle at the end of it there but it, the only thing that was missing and I forgot that Will and Naomi weren't there you forgot we you, weren't there? wow well, well, that's because you were I was the oh my the whole God. Time. <laughs> <laughs> you got so caught up in the experience that it was a sort of given that you were there and yeah. I, 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 went, I went looking for you both and it was it was very upsetting that you weren't there, because really it, it was the first time that we, we'd seen it. Yeah. Well, I, it, I would have liked it to have been together. <laughs> what a wonderful experience for you as a filmmaker, though. A new experience to have, a, you know, a different type of film and, and to get that reaction. Um, yeah, I mean, Alan's right, because, you know, I've never had that reaction from a film before. But uh, honestly, it's, it's, it is the generosity of spirit, wouldn't you say, Alan? Um, that, that lit, it's uncynical. Yeah. The, yeah. the film's not cynical and, and leaves you yeah. with a sort of very positive taste. And uh, that, that's my greatest takeaway from it. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's just great to be out here doing these things when you have a good movie. Yeah. You know, because I've been in front of, I've been in front of most of you uh, quite a few times with, uh, with, uh, you know, I mean. Let's not less, name names. Less, less than spectacular. Let's not name names. I'm not going to, but le less than spectacular <laughs> films. And the first question is always, so, how are Jada and the kids? <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, so Whereas this one, there's so much to talk about with regards to this character that yeah. you play. And for you, we know that you can do it all. We know you can sing, you can dance, the comedy, the drama. But what is it like being given that opportunity to do all of that in one role? Yeah, that, that was spectacular. Just the, the, you know, the singing, dancing, drama, comedy, action, uh, the adventure is, is everything that I've, I've cultivated as a performer for the last 30 years to be able to do it in one film and for a big chunk of it to be CGI. The great thing with the CGI is you get you get two, three, and four opportunities to get it right. You do it one time in rehearsal and yeah, you kind of like it and then you do it on set and you, 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 you sort of like the lines you came up with, then you go into motion capture and then you can try something different. So it's so many opportunities to be able to, to get it right. So, and uh, well, I loved it. This was well, the right. reason I went looking for you last night was actually that it was the consistency of your performance, um, which, you know, for you and I on the day is, is hard to recognize, but when you watch it as a whole, yeah. that, that's the principal reason I came looking for you, because it, it actually looked like we knew what we were doing. Right, yeah. <laughs> I just have this lovely image of you wandering around the Audi in Leicester Square going, has anyone seen Will? <laughs> He's going to try desperately to find him. Um, Mr. Naomi, can I ask you guys, uh, Mina and, and um, Naomi, about this wonderful, wonderful chemistry that you guys have on screen, but also this journey that you guys have been on in terms of getting these roles, which I know was a tough job for you in terms of getting it right and finally finding these two and knowing that they were right, to the realization and the fact that now audiences are about to see that. What's that journey been like for you? Oh my gosh, do you wanna start? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. I, I met Naomi uh, before we even got the roles. We tested together and obviously Disney really wanted to make sure the chemistry was there. And uh, I think we got each other right away. We have similar energy and our, our humor is similar. Uh, I think we were raised in very similar households. So uh, we just got along and I think uh, hopefully you can see that on screen. Yeah, when, I, when, when we tested together, I think for me, Mina just brought this 
vulnerability, you know, to the character that I think, yes, Aladdin. Couldn't stop crying. Is, he was just <laughs> crying. He was so sensitive. Oh my gosh. No, but like. I need this role yeah. so bad. <laughs> please I need give this me a job. So bad, girl. Please don't mess it up for me. <laughs> They're making us test together, so my performance is going to be linked to yours. So please. <laughs> well, clearly, they sent you the tapes, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, but Aladdin is fun, cheeky, bouncy, but he's so much more than that as well. And, like, come on, how can you not fall in love with this face? Look at this. Look at the eyes. He's so when handsome. He says, and when he he's says, so do handsome. you trust me? I mean, come on. Like, that's why, yeah, it was very easy in that moment. <laughs> he's pretty. Yeah, but, and, and Naomi, I know we're tooting each other's horns here, but Naomi really <laughs> brings that uh, that empowerment and that strength to the role and uh, I don't think anyone else could have could have done it quite like her. So uh, I'm I'm very blessed to have gone on this journey with her. Thanks. She's an absolute dream, and uh, I absolutely love her. And wh while we're talking about Naomi, I want to say because that that was one of the uh, brilliant new additions to uh, this version of the the film. The the idea that Princess Jasmine uh, wanted to rule. Right, so that was a sort of a new storyline that was added uh, from from the visionary mind of Guy Ritchie. Um, like that that idea that she wanted to rule was such a delicate and fantastic way to to be able to uh, create the modern element of this character. But she was in a world where that's ridiculous. A woman can't be sultan. Uh, a woman isn't allowed to rule. And she was fighting to you know for that position. And then the song "Speechless," I think, is is the the signature of this version of the film. And I. I Maybe the signature of a generation. Yes, it is. Uh, I will not go speechless, uh, and yeah. that that was fantastic. And um, that that's when I knew that we were winning. The day you did that, I was like, oh. okay, this oh, movie's well, going to work. Oh, well, the day and it's that day's up, right? Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, oh yeah. I forgot right. about that. Yeah. So. Oh, I shouldn't have given you this. <laughs> oh, I forgot. So oh. we're on set. And I've given it. She, she, Naomi just did you this, tell this story so brilliant story. rendition of Speechless and it's one shot and she's walking He's gonna through exaggerate it. and she's crying. This, this is the 100% truth. And she's crying and everything is great. And, and it was like, it was a moment for all of us on set. And she had that big vein in the middle of her forehead. <laughs> And she will guy not go speechless. Guy was crying again. Every guy was <laughs> crying, and oh, and I was I was really moved. And I go walking over to her to go say, "Great job." Yeah, and I didn't you know. It's not like I'd been. And her whatever. back is to me. Her back is to me, and I go, and you know, it was so emotional. And I go, I say, "Hey, Naomi," and in slow motion, she turns around. No! And she turns around. No. And she goes, no, and no, I no. already have my hand up for the high five. Yeah. And she turns around, and she goes, and she goes, <laughs> and turns around, and my hand is already up. No. And she goes, and I'm like, no. no. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, first ah. of all, it was not that exaggerated, it was a you guys. Full but, no, it was not. not. High five. It was not. And I'm no. like, you know, she's a young no. actress. She's just given no. a great performance. I repeat I that in the name of I Jesus. I can't pull back. No. I can't <laughs> take the high. So it was like a full snot high five splashing out of the okay. fingers. Okay, he's high. exaggerating. Good job. Number one. Good job. And it was like a tiny, just like a little, you know, it was just like. It was a full boogie like snot that. high and five. And also, I didn't know, like, it was Will Smith coming up to give me a high five. And I'm like, I literally. And we had a we brief spend, moment like, where we caught we eyes. <laughs> we caught eyes. And we, we both did. knew she had boogie like, snot on her hand. This? And then and we I both knew, back and out. I was like, are you going like, to have the integrity to stop oh your hand gosh. right now? And because then, I'm trying to give you love, and I'm not going to no. stop. It but was because like, if, if, you know what I mean? Like, it was so split second. And there was no, it was fine. There was no it was snot good, on my hand. But, but anyway, great, the next sorry. day at the that gym, was too much. the next that was day too at the gym, much. I literally was like, I need to, I need to just, I have then to she say didn't this. Say anything, and so I, I was like, shall anything. we talk about this what This is what you guys yesterday. came for, right? This yeah, is right sorry. Um, anyway, I was just about to ask guys, how did you get, story. and I shouldn't have never given him that ammunition. I don't know why. No. But anyway, there's this really great song called Speechless, and it's written by Alan Menken, who's won eight Oscars. Do you want to say anything? Great scenes. I was just about to ask Alan, but I was just going to say, guy, how did you get any work done? <laughs> it's a good question. 
<laughs> guys like uh, Alan. Um, yes. Congratulations. I I, I delivered a little, you, bit of, a little bit of snot on yeah. the piano as I wrote the song. So it actually. Yes. Thanks, uh, Al. Yeah. I, and I cried. No, I think I think actually when we wrote that song, I wrote the song with this team of Pasek and Paul, who I think people know wrote uh, Greatest Showman and uh, La La Land, Land and Dear Evan Hansen, a very very talented. And we wrote this song, and when we delivered this song, I think it also kind of pushed, the, you know, it pushed everyone to go, okay, now if we're going to earn this song, we're going to have to really also lay into that journey of, of Jasmine and how she's really kept silent and how she has to find her voice. So it was, all of that came together in a pretty organic way. And it was weird, the timing of when we filmed that song as well. Um, there was a lot going on in the world that I felt like related so much to that oh, moment. Very me too. Yeah. yeah, and I think for me, I definitely performing that song. I really took that on. You know, I wanted to kind of, I wanted it to be raw and angry. Um, I didn't want it to be kind of this pretty performance. Um, so it was a very emotional day, and I remember that for, after the first take, I was like, it was like finished, and obviously I, I just felt emotional. And you, you came up, but I had to do like a lot more takes. So I had to kind of conserve my energy and Guy came up to me and he just looked at me and I went, no, go away, go away, go away. Cause you're about to start to cry. And I was like, I can't, I was like, I've got to do this three more times. Like, uh, so yeah, it was There's really a lot special. of crying on set. So from much my, crying. So much crying. Just from like my <laughs> audition tape to speechless. <laughs> I mean, there's to the premiere, it's a full to circle. Premiere, Literally. Yeah. It's a full circle. Right, we've got some people here. I think oh, you might want to ask the questions. questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cry um, Richie, cry Richie. That's cry right. Richie. Cry Richie. <laughs> Let's go down the front down. here, lady in the red. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, in the white t-shirt. Hello, sir. Um, so this is a question for Will Smith, actually. Hey, man. Uh, so when I was watching the film, I definitely got a 90s hip hop vibe from um, the genie. Mm -hmm. If he had any anthem, any song, what would the anthem be? If I say it again, if I had any... Any song, any anthem. If so, like for the genie. Uh, an anthem. Okay, yeah, sorry, the speaker's not playing. <laughs> and the anthem, uh, uh, that, you know, the, the, the friend like me is ridiculous. Like, you know, what, what, what the thing is with the, the, the friend like me is how much it bends into other things. When we first went into the studio, um, uh, I was really concerned about how I would get my signature onto... On, onto the film, and then we started messing with um, a Friend Like Me was the first song. And there's a, uh, there's a hip hop break beat uh, by the Honey Drippers called Impeach the President, and it's like a hip hop break beat staple. So I had them grab the, the, the drum loop from that and started messing with Friend Like Me over that. So for, you know, for me, that, that song was the one that was the, the central uh, uh, sort of the it, it, it opened the genie up with, it, within me. I realized how, and I'm not crying. I was, I have allergies. <laughs> it looks like, my, my allergies, you know. I, know. I was like, oh no, my eyes go to drip. Um, no, it, it's, um, that, I, I think that song was the one that really showed me that I'd be, I, I could find the genie in a way that would satisfy the nostalgic yearning of the audience, but also be able to add a new flavor. And by the way, people applauded after your number yesterday. Really? After a friend like me, yep. Yeah, uh, well, oh. You killed it, Glad killed it. Uh, I want, I just, cause I I've only seen it with like seven or eight people. I've never seen it in a, in a full audience. You would have been very happy. Oh, uh, very. Go in disguise. When it comes out, go in disguise and watch yeah, it with yeah. a... Well, I'm definitely doing do. that. Yeah. I'm going do you to do that, that actually? You Wait, can you, you need to that? tell me the stories about that. Do you think you can that? do that? Yeah, I always go for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I always go uh, and I sit in the back row and I watch the movie every, every night. Uh, not, not to interrupt you, but there are hands oh, in the sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That man waving, he's yes. so desperate and he's standing up. It's it's like, come on. We're and then we'll get a mic. Yeah, no, Sorry. he's like, he's really excited. Yes. Really, he's up already, go. Hi guys, I'm from Budapest, Hungary, and Mr. Smith, you have a special relationship to Hungary. Yes, I almost because got arrested, it was yes, great. Yes, yes, yes. I really, I really want to, uh, it's not connected to Aladdin, but it's an exclusive question for our viewers, yes. <laughs> that uh, uh, 
I tell the story, Mr. Smith did the In My Feelings Challenge yes, at yes. our oldest bridge, and it was one of the most dangerous stunts ever. And actually, after that, people com uh, complained that, you know, many people wanted to uh, jump the bridge. Jump, yeah, it. yeah, they How should was do it? that. No, really, I, I have to be honest, guys, it was too easy to get up on top of that bridge. <laughs> yeah, no, really, I mean, no, no, I, I no, really, seriously, I, I, I blame the, the Hungarian government. I think... You guys, you've got, you've got to lock the bridge. It's like, I literally walked out of my hotel room, walked up the bridge, opened the door, and climbed up on the top. It, it, and it's like, I can't be expected to, to like not take that opportunity. So just put a, put a lock on the bridge. Put you realize a, he's a genie, right? <laughs> no, it was fantastic, though. It was, it was really beautiful up there. And uh, I don't want to encourage people to do that, but it was like a, a very beautiful view. But don't do it. Lock the bridge. <laughs> um, let's go down here at the front, please. Man in the Hawaiian shirt. I think it's Hawaiian. Go for it. Possibly. Kind of. Mm -hmm. um, first, hi, Aladdin. Secondly. Um, hey. 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 First and foremost, <laughs> hi, Aladdin. <laughs> Um, What's up? God, exactly. <laughs> um, my question is for Will. I'm from Verge magazine. Um, this role of the genie is an iconic Disney character made great by the late and great Robin Williams. Mm. Did you feel this pressure to create homage for him? And yeah. how did you feel that you could put your own spin on it to where audiences around the world would make this the new icon? Yeah, you know, I, w I was terrified with that. You know, it it it's like... Uh, when you get that call, hey, you know, we're gonna redo Aladdin, Will, we want you to, to be a part of it. You know, it's like, hey, Will, we're thinking of redoing The Godfather, you know. <laughs> we're, we're thinking of you for the Al Pacino role, you know. Like, dude, <laughs> you know, you just, you don't, you don't want to go anywhere near the, those kinds of roles. It's like there's, there's, Robin didn't leave much room for improvement in, in the genie, so. Um, the, the first thing that I, that I thought about was that it was gonna be live action. So I knew that would be some opportunities and it would look and feel uh, different being live action. Um, and then the next thing, what I, what I discovered in the process is that you know, Robin Williams actually revolutionized what you could do in an animated film. It's like you know, before that time, nobody was really using though that that amount of current references and things like that he sort of created this uh omnipresent genie who had been forward and backward in time and and had the 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 full scope and breadth of 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 time and ex human experience to draw from for comedy so that that was uh, revolutionary uh, Will, can I, I want to point something, one thing yes. out. Robin, in animation, went into the studio, he would do one take, another take, another take, another take, and they cut them together. Mm -hmm. You had to go and do it right in real time. Ooh. Oh, yeah, okay, I think didn't about that. That's, that's a whole that different challenge. Yeah, when you had the opportunity. You uh, filled you know. those shoes and then some. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't make it any easier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it didn't make it less scary, you know, because he, re but they really that's captured, what I'm saying. though, yeah. Yeah. Um, they captured, um, you know, something that, was for a generation, you know, when you're you're marking people's childhoods, you know. So um, what what I wanted to do was find a way to to uh, create an homage to Robin and to the performance that uh, with the songs and everything that people would still connect to, but then be able to add the that uh, new hip hop flavor. Just be warned, there are no quick answers when you. No, 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 it. no. <laughs> No, we're going to do yes and no from here on out. No, yeah. we are not. No, that's guy's job. Guys, <laughs> guys are yes and no. no you, can't, you don't get to direct the press conference. Hey. That's my job. Just saying. Hey. Just saying. You, you directed Be the warned. movie. You directed the movie. You do not get to direct the press conference. Lady over there with a the microphone has Sorry. a question. Hello. Hi, Cast. Hi. Uh, just to Hello. say that the film is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Um, to Will. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Listen, you haven't learned yet. <laughs> guys, guys, gonna get his chest pulled out in a minute. Asked. I'm glad you asked. When I was six. Um... <laughs> well, it is kind of a when you were six question. Um, you are really inspiring, and I know that a lot of people watch your kind of inspirational talks, and whenever you give interviews, you have inspirational nuggets. What was it in Aladdin that was the most inspiring line for you that you were like, actually, I really click with this? You know, it, it wasn't an inspiring line as much as the relationship that Mina and I were able to create as Genie and Aladdin. 
and then also the the relationship that we were able to create and still creating with Will and Mina. Um, you know, there was a uh, when when we first came on to set for you know because my character was was CGI, I felt like I had a whole lot more bandwidth to to pay attention. It's just where I'm at in my life right now. So the relationship that we're were and still are cultivating is a lot like the the genie Aladdin re relationship. You know, uh, we're we're talking just yesterday. It's like I, I want them to see how beautiful a moment and an opportunity that this is in their lives and, the, and in their careers. So, if, you know, every moment during the day I say, hey, stop, relax, take a minute, realize where you are, realize what you've done, and enjoy these moments. If you can't enjoy it now, you'll never be able to enjoy it, you know. And I hope what was what was your experience in? Uh, yeah, it was it was really organic, and you know, I don't think it's anything anyone thought of. But as I got to know Will in real life, Aladdin was getting to know the genie and uh, building that relationship with him. And I think the most the lesson that I kind of learned the most from uh, Aladdin and the genie is that, you know. Uh, Aladdin is at a point in his life where he promises to use his third wish to set him free and then he apologizes that he's not going to do that anymore and the genie's like I don't care about that he's like I just want you to get it I want you to get the point I don't care about you setting me free and that's kind of really the epitome of the journey for Aladdin is that he gets to this point and he still doesn't get it so then he falls but he's able to pick himself back up. So uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, and, and Will's amazing. <laughs> Lady in the front row. Just here, as please. a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a co from the British Blacklist. Hi. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm here. Um, There's a question for Guy and for me and Naomi. Thank God. Well, <laughs> just to break it up a bit, I do have a question for Will, but I'll try and squeeze it all in. Um, first of all, Guy, in regards to casting authentically, ethnic, ethnically authentically, if that's a sentence, um, what paint? What measures did you take to make sure you got the casting right? Because there's so much pressure to make sure there's visual representation on screen. And also Naomi and Mina, obviously it's not very often that people who are ethnic get a chance to be in a, a Disney classic. Mm -hmm. So obviously a lot of brown people would have been going for this casting. What did you do in your casting to stand out? And how did you manage to sift through all the casting calls? And Will, um, are we going to see you in more? Now we're in so trouble. I'm I'm Oh, dog. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Are Come we going to see you in any more kids' films? I can see you leading an Indiana Jones type family adventure. Mm. Oh my Ooh. God. Yes. Can, can we hold that you for Trojan, a second? <laughs> Trojan horse your way into this. I'm glad didn't you asked. You, you pretend it was when about was me, sick. but really What's it was about, about Will. Guys? No, your question's important. It's important for my platform. Okay, so, well. so let me address one thing at a time here. <clears throat> um, the approach was, was to create an, an agrabah, which we believed was representative of a sort of a multicultural um, Middle Eastern part of the world. It was in part fantasy, but there was an organic tone that just seemed natural. And, you know, the cast reflects that. But that's really what we were after, was a, a, a multicultural representation of what we thought this part of the world should have been. So, hence we have the cast that we have. I would, have, I was very I would have liked to have answered doing. it with a yes or a no, but, but now I'm very competitive. I was very uncomfortable doing blue face. Hey, first of all, <laughs> yes, Africa earrings, yes, mm-mm, feeling that. Okay, what did we audition to stand at? Okay, I mean, for me, personally... You can't just give compliments, you got to answer the question. Oh, no, but I'm loving it, and it deserved a compliment. Um, for me, I think what was great was that I had a really strong idea of what I wanted to do with this character, which I think gave me peace, because I was like, you know what... I'm gonna put out there what I believe, you know, it should be or it could be. And and then it's like, if that's what they want, then great. And if it's not, then it's probably not for me anyway. Or you, you know what I mean? Um, so the casting process was actually really fun. I remember the, the first time that we actually worked together, like, we clicked. It was easy, wasn't it? It was like, oh, this is great. You know, I love working with Guy. I mean, he's someone that if he trusts you, then, you know, he just lets you kind of play. He gives you room and space to do things and to try things. Um, and then, of course, the lovely Mina. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes that great films, they represent something greater than themselves. And uh, I'm not labeling our film in any which way, but... 
I think we represent this movement that's beginning to happen in Hollywood that ethnic diverse groups can lead Hollywood films to the finish line. And hopefully we can do that so then we can keep making films like this, we can keep giving people opportunities, and we can keep aiming towards uh, equality and inclusiveness. Amen. And Indiana Jones, well, no, I'm joking. <laughs> yes or no, I dare you. Uh, yes. That's it, you can't see anymore. That's it. He dared him. No. He dared. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to go halfway back, the gentleman at the edge there, please, for a question. And anyone over the side at the end there as well for the next one? Yes, hello. Um, I'm from Israel. Uh, question to Will. Um, you recently celebrated your 50th birthday and. Woo! Yeah! Maz Mazel tov. Thank you. And um, we see you, you know, in the internet, you are partying this landmark and you are doing your bucket list challenge and you did also a party for charity. And I wanted to know, you know, is this landmark important to you and how now when you reflect on your career and maybe and your life, do you have any insights you want to share, you know, about being 50, the French prince at 50? Okay. Yes. I can't believe... Oh, what? Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> didn't seem to fit the question though, guy. <laughs> no, yes, um, it, it, you know, there's a, there's a big part of, of turning 50. I've, I've turned a corner um, in my life and, and this film is, you know, really sort of marks a, a, a re-emergence for me. I took a little over two years off away from film to study and learn and grow and sort of readjust my, my priorities. Um, and yeah, the bucket list really sort of illustrates uh, how I want to be in the world. I want to, you know, I, I call it the, uh, the, the perfect noun equation. So I'm always looking for the perfect noun equation. I want to be with people that I, I love to be with in places that I love to be doing things I love to do. And this is the, the perfect equation for me. Man. Without turning this into the sycophantic road show, uh, uh, <laughs> I have to tell you that um, Mr. Smith is um, unlimitedly inspiring yeah. in his generosity. And uh, in no small part, this in the entire positivity of the set was because of Will's DNA. Um, and he really is the man that he purports himself to be. Um, so I'm just going to take this moment. <laughs> Just, it's my turn to cry. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Will. No, it's been it's been beautiful. Thank you, man. Um, did we get a microphone to someone else here? Me. There you go. Go for it. There you are. Sorry. Hi, guys. Um, so for me, this movie, I'm so proud because of the diversity in the movie. And my favorite line in the movie is when Aladdin says to Jasmine, "Do you trust me?" So I'm going to test you guys. Can you say, "Do you trust me?" in other languages? Habibi Ooh. over there. I'm expecting a few from you. So. Oh, Amina definitely can. Everyone, so, but me and I come on a couple from you. Uh, a couple? I don't know a couple of different languages. Okay. I wish. Uh, te feya, which means, uh, do you trust in me or do you trust me? In Arabic, it's a little different. I do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I can do it in Ebonic. Yo, homie, we good? I love it. <laughs> oh, wait, surely Guy can say it in Hebrew, no? Hebrew. Yeah. What about a Cockney accent? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm better off doing it in Cockney. <laughs> yeah, e either or, it's going to be anticlimactic. Just <laughs> trust Let's me. Let's do the Cockney accent. Trust me. No, I'm, I'm, hand, I'm oh, handing no. a spanner okay, over okay. to Alan. <laughs> um, and last question, actually. Oh, uh, lady in the blue top here. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Oh. Question a little bit for everybody. We talked about the emotional side of um, the film. Everybody crying on set. What about the funniest moment during filming? Will, you start. <laughs> and everybody else should say something. The funniest moment. Um, I can imagine only big fun moment with Will Smith. No, we, had a, we, had a <laughs> we had a really good one. There was a moment after Jafar's throne Aladdin into the water, and we come back, and it's this big dramatic moment turning towards the end of the film, and we all walk, we walk back in, and Jafar is with the Sultan, and he sees 
that Aladdin is still alive. And Genie walks in, and we all know he tried to kill him. And Mina has to walk right up the middle, and he looks at Jafar, and his line is, my sultan, he's telling the sultan, he said, he's supposed to say, he's not who he seems to be, is the line. And Mina, in the moment, he walks up and he looks, and he says, him nam whom him seem him is. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and Ma Wan, had Ma Wan had to respond. Oh, I'm not who I'm, I'm saying I'm is. <laughs> and uh, Will actually made t-shirts made I got with t-shirts that. T-shirts to say him nam whom him seem him is. <laughs> And that, that was one of those terrible acting moments when, when you start laughing. What? You can literally, like, it's this crazy thing that happens with actors, and it's, it's, you start laughing, and you can literally shut a set down for three hours. Like, you just can't, you never can say the line again, because now you have to walk in and you look. Because you we, can see a laugh in the you eyes. You can see a laugh in the eyes, yeah. It is. But so that, I was like, yeah, that was, that was one, one, one definitely for the African-American audience. We appreciate it. <laughs> Him nam whom him seem him is. <laughs> Sounds like that might have been the funniest moment for everyone, apart yeah, from you, we Mina. Were yeah, we were yeah. Oh, he was tired. It was towards the end of filming. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. it's all good. I'm glad I could make everyone laugh. Yeah, that, was, that was fantastic. Uh, for me, you know, one of my funnest moments and something that I can uh, cross off my bucket list uh, is uh, the improv scene me and Will had. Oh. Uh, it's known as the jam scene now. Guy was kind enough to, he, he kind of stayed, he blocked this scene and Guy already kind of made it awkward by blocking the scene by creating a lot of space between the royal family and uh, Prince Ali and the genie. So there was already that. And um, he kind of just let us riff a little bit and I got to improv with Will and, and it was hilarious. He was I, we were playing with concepts like, you know, and it, this actually made the film, but Will kind of does a bomb dropping. And me and my Aladdin brain, I went, Aladdin wouldn't know what a bomb is. <laughs> it's before that. So we were just riffing off ideas like that, and it was, it was just, it was great. Yeah, that was very funny. Um, I'd like to finish with asking Alan a question, if that's okay. Yeah. Because being part of this nearly 30 years ago and helping create these wonderful, wonderful songs and being given the opportunity to revisit them yeah. and rework them and make them relevant to today and make them relevant to Guy's vision as well, but also introduce new things. What was that experience well, like? Well, you know, this bit is such a journey for me because it started as, literally at the same time that Howard Ashman and I were creating Little Mermaid, we were creating Aladdin. And we, Aladdin was originally a buddy picture with a uh, with a uh, princess, but it was like a, a kind of a homage to Hope Crosby Road Pictures and the Golden Age of Hollywood, and then it became a romance, and then it became a broad. And Howard was gone; he never he never lived to see either, <clears throat> excuse me, Beauty or Aladdin. Tim Rice came in, and we wrote Whole New World. Then came the Broadway show, and it's it's just been this journey, and I you know when I came to this, I really wanted to be part of Guy Ritchie's team, and I. I didn't know what a Guy Ritchie musical would be like. Right. Mm. I mean, who knew what that would be? And actually, one of the best experiences for me was watching the evolution in Guy also, as I would bring songs to him and play them and get his opinion back, and we got this communication going. And then when he loves a song, it, it's just watching him listen to it is amazing mm. because he just is so into it. Yeah. Um, yep. And. I've just loved watching your journey. Mm. You know, it's been, it's been great for me. Uh, and now watching the film, it's unbelievable to think two years ago we started this going, who are you, who are you, what is this? And here it is. And it's a miracle. So. And it's brilliant. Um, thank you so, so much for your time and for entertaining us all this afternoon <laughs> as well and for answering your questions. Thank you guys for being here. Can we have a huge round of applause?